So first up, before I start this video, I just want to clear something right off the bat. I did not plan to wear a yellow shirt with the iPhone XR. It kind of just happened. So let's just get that out of the way. But we're here and I'm going to still do the video. And this is a very interesting video because I was looking at the iPhone sales for this quarter and the iPhone XR happened to be the most popular iPhone being bought today. 48% of iPhone sales are the iPhone XR. That makes a lot of sense considering its price point. A lot of people have raved reviews about this device calling it the best iPhone for the money. And they have the right to do so. There's a lot of great features packed inside of here that take example from the more expensive ones. You're essentially getting the exact same internal hardware as the more expensive iPhone XS, XS Max for $250 cheaper. It also tells me that people don't want to spend that much money on more expensive products. Sure, there's always going to be a niche market for more expensive iPhones or any phones in general, but the majority of consumers just want an iPhone. If you look at the data, you can see that even the iPhone 8 was outselling the iPhone XS and XS Max, because again, the price makes a lot of sense for people who want to buy iPhones. And to be quite honest, I think Apple is okay with this because at the end of the day, they're transitioning from not just a hardware company, but into a company that offers a lot of services. Their services model has increased. They're making a lot more profit now. In fact, this is the first year that Apple's iPhone sales don't account for 50% of all their revenue. Now, here's what I like and don't like about the iPhone XR about almost one year or eight months later. I love the battery life. In fact, the battery life is so good. It's one of the only iPhones that will get you a day and a half of use without having to worry about being next to a charger. Don't get me wrong, the iPhone XS has no problems getting me through the entire day, but if you're all about having the best battery life, the iPhone XR is going to do a much better job. In fact, I do know a couple of people who actually downgraded to the iPhone XR just because of the battery life. The next thing is the display. I personally don't use the iPhone XR for this specific reason. I can notice the resolution difference between this and something like the iPhone XS. But you have to remember, I'm a tech enthusiast. I'm continuously surrounded by the best smartphones on the market. So I notice these things, but 90% of people who are buying iPhones don't know the difference. And quite frankly, most of them don't even care. At the end of the day, it's still a great display. You just have to look really closely if you want to see any pixelation. Then there's the software experience. I don't see a difference between this and the iPhone XS. Both phones run equally fast. The only thing that I do notice is the lack of 3D touch. I I do miss it on the iPhone XR. Don't get me wrong, long pressed has replaced most situations, but there's a couple of instances where I like 3D Touch, specifically when it comes to typing. You can be typing a text message or an email, and if you're able to 3D Touch, you can move the cursor around, which I find to be so important. Now, when it comes to the camera, I thought I was going to miss the second lens to get two times zoom. But to be honest, there was only like one situation over eight months where I actually needed to use two times zoom. And that's when I was sitting in a crowd and I couldn't get out of my seat to get closer to the subject. But that was the only time. And if you really need to get closer to the subject, we have these things called feet. And you can just walk up a little bit to get the exact same shot you'd get with the iPhone XS. And last up is the design. In fact, I actually find it to be the perfect size between all three iPhones. It's not too small, it's not too big, it's giving me just enough screen real estate while still being able to use it with one hand. So here's the bottom line. The iPhone XR about 10 months later is still a solid device and it absolutely makes sense why this is the most selling iPhone for Apple this quarter. The fact that it's $750, you're not really sacrificing too many features from the more expensive iPhone XS and at the end of the day, it gets you into the Apple ecosystem ecosystem. A lot of people own MacBooks or an Apple Watch and they want to be able to take advantage of pairing all these devices and sometimes you just don't need the most expensive device to do that. Plus, with phones getting so good these days, having the latest iPhone is not as important as it used to be. Anyways, that wraps up this little revisit. I hope you guys enjoyed it because if you did, I'd love for you to hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.